Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1177. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, last Friday, Mr. Excel and I put out Dual 171, and we had to take the first and last name from a cell and split it apart based on two capital letters. Now, I actually did this formula right here which only couldn't do English letters, because these are capital. And Bill Sizzes, who always has amazing formulas, posted this great solution based on the code function. And then he used the substitute function. A few other people talked about the substitute function in the comments. And not only that, but a few people, these two guys right here, talked about Flash Phil being able to do this. No way. Check this out. I'm going to type Thomas, Enter. And then instead of going to Data, Flash Fill, and clicking it, I'm going to use the keyboard. You can see the keyboard right there. It's Control E. I'm going to Control E. And just like that, Flash Fill is picking up the fact that we went all the way to the next capital. And then the last, I just type Stuart, Enter, and then Control E. you got to be kidding me. That is fast and easy. And as a few people posted, including these guys, it's just it doesn't flash fill doesn't work for everything. But for some things like this, it is profoundly faster than anything else. Now, let's do this formula right here. And again, the formula I have over here, I like this if I'm doing English, because it only actually required one, two, like four different functions. So it's not calling too many functions. This formula here is going to be a wild one, calling a lot of functions. All right, now the first thing is we need to, as we copy the formula down, extract each letter and then ask the question, are you the second upper? So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to get an array of 1 to 13 here and an array of 1 to 9 here for that's how many characters. So I'm going to say equals in double quotes 1 colon and double quote join it to the ampersand and the len. Now right now all this will do is we'll create a text string between 1 and in this case I think it's F9 13 control Z control enter. If I copy this down you can see it's just a text string here, but it's giving me this strange row 1 to row 11, row 1 to row 9. Now that's text, and I need it as a reference. So I use the indirect function. Indirect takes text that represents a reference and converts it back to a reference. Now indirect is a volatile function, so it'll recalculate any time you do anything here. But watch this. If I hit F9 to try and look what it evaluates to, it's not going to let me because the number of cells between row 1 and 13 is huge. So I'm simply then going to ask the question, hey, don't give me all the cells. Give me just the row numbers. And now if I highlight this in F9, you can see it gives me exactly what I want. That will serve inside of the mid function to extract each one of those letters. Control Z. I'm going to Control Shift Enter, double click and send it down, and just go to some cell down here and highlight an F9. I'm just checking to see if it is, in fact, a dynamic array of sequential numbers. It looks like it's working. Now I can throw this inside of mid and the text. Boom, there's the text. And there's the starting number. In order for mid, to spit out multiple answers, meaning it wants to extract a bunch, I have to have 1 to 13 starting number, comma, and then I simply say the length, 1. Now, this is a function argument array operation. It's expecting just a single start number. We gave it 13. When I highlight the mid now, it will give us an array of answers, F9. And there's all the characters, Control Z. Now, I want to compare this over here. This row right here, this is a lot easier than what I just did right there. You can see F9, it gives me 2 to 100. We're assuming that the biggest number will be 100 here. The problem with that is if you ever insert a row up here, this stops working because now it's giving the array 3 to 101. So if I come up here and F9. So now it's giving three. So if you're never going to insert rows, that is much easier. But just in case you are, this is a different way to do it. And there's other ways to, to do that, too. We could have done something else. But here we're 
creating just a unique array of sequential numbers, one for each one. Now I want to ask the question, hey, code. I'm asking now, of each one of those letters, what is the ASCII code? So now if I highlight this and hit F9, there is the ASCII code. Now this isn't going to work because remember, we needed the second one. 84 is T. 83 is S, so control Z, and I learned this from Bill over here. He did rows 2 to 100. I'm just going to start this array at 2 and just skip over the first one. Now it's not going to even extract that first T. It's going to start at the 2. So now when I go and F9, now we have 83. That's the only capital letter in there, control Z. Now I can ask the question, and I'm going to copy this. Hey, are any of you equal to control V? Now, that would be ridiculous because we'd get all trues. But watch this. Now I'm going to convert what's being spit out by mid into the upper. We'll convert all of those letters to just uppercase letters. There's going to be one uppercase in the first array, all uppercase in the last. So we'll only get one true F9. That is the essence of the formula that Bill did. We're creating an array of trues and falses, picking out the second capital letter, Control Z. Now, notice it was trues and falses, so I need the relative position. So I'm going to use match. The lookup value is true, comma. There's the array, and that is a big, huge array format. So we're going to have to use Control Shift Enter, comma, zero, close parentheses. If I highlight this in F9, there's the six. So right here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So now I can use that 6 in the left function, Control Z. And here I'm going to put left. The text is right there, comma. And you've got to be kidding me, that whole num characters from the left, that's that array formula, 6. Close parentheses. And if I hit Enter, it's going to give me an error because there's a big, huge bunch of array calculations. You can see how many different functions there are here, too. So this is pretty wild. We have to use Control Shift and Enter to tell Excel that this was an array calculation. Double click and send it down. Absolutely beautiful. Now, Remember, we did flash fill over here, and it was just a second. If it's just a one-time deal, flash fill rules. If it was something dynamic, that's where formulas come in. Anytime we get a new data dump here, it automatically extracts that first name. Now, substitute, and Bill said, yeah, might as well use substitute. A few other people posted this too. Hey, where's the text? Right there, comma, and now the old text to find and substitute something for. There it is, comma, the new text, double quote, double quote, zero length text string, which we'll just put nothing in. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. Wow, that is a lot of fun. There's a wild formula there. There's the substitute and the amazing flash fill. All right, love hanging out on our online Excel team. We'll see you next video.